dalam berbilion penduduk dunia yang ada, ada di kalangan kita yang tidak pun ada hak, tidak ada kewarganegaraan, tidak ada pembelaan, tidak ada juga mereka yang begitu simpati hingga dapat mengubah nasib masyarakat ini. Dan mereka lah orang-orang Rohingya yang masih menderita kerana kita, masyarakat antarabangsa, masih lagi tidak melakukan secukupnya untuk memastikan nasib mereka berubah. Oleh itu, saya ingin meminta izin berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris. Uh, I would like to welcome my two guests for today. Uh, on the furthest away from me is Dr. Maung Zarni. He's, uh, he's been a fellow at LRC and stuff, but uh, he's now is also a fellow at University Malaya. Thank you so much for gracing Malaysia so that we can have more perspective on this very important issue. And then I have Saful Haq. Uh, photo activist, I like that term that you put in, in, in on your online presence. So you've been around capturing what you do best, uh, photos of the sufferings and the plight of the Rohingyas. But for the benefit of the general audience in Malaysia, where I'm pitching this discussion tonight, I'd like to go two steps back maybe and look at how we frame this crisis and issue. Because a lot of people have a lot of perception of what this issue really is. Um, maybe a few years ago, it's hidden underneath the whole big issue called Myanmar and the opening up of Myanmar, all these other names now being mentioned. But as we see billions of US dollars going into Myanmar, even as we speak, how can it be that one of the most pressing problem and crisis in the 20th century is still existing in the 21st century, opening up of Myanmar as we know it? So I would like to give the opportunity to Dr. Zarni first to, to frame it, because even President Barack Obama might not have term it correctly uh, and and this is something to be really looked at because if America for all its economic sanction and pressures on Myanmar miss this opportunity to frame it correctly then this is the elephant in the room that we must not repeat again well firstly um, what is happening to the Rohingya people did not begin yesterday mm -hmm. or or begin as a result of the opening up okay. you know the 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 framing of the sufferings and the mass violence directed against the Rohingya okay. as part and per parcel mm. of this great democratic opening okay. you're know, coming even from a country like okay. Indonesia Indonesian okay. uh, yeah. uh, foreign minister mm -hmm. as well as you know international crisis mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. They frame this as part of the opening up. Yugoslavia, okay. when you open up a country, yeah. uh, it's a tinderbox, you know, it mm -hmm. just like, you know, mm -hmm. blow up uh, in, in your face. Yes. That's factually wrong okay. because the directed and targeted attacks of mm -hmm. Rohingya mm -hmm. were, first of all, initiated by the very state that is in control or that okay. has been in control uh, yeah. in the hands of the military since 1962 mm. and the, the the first large wave of Rohingya okay. persecution mm -hmm. that took the form of anti-immigration crackdown mm -hmm. took place in February 1978 okay. if you go far back to 1978-79, you know, the, both academic and popular journals such as Far Eastern Economic Review, mm -hmm. now defunct, or the Asian Survey from the okay. University of California at Berkeley, they used the term in 1978 and 79, Burma's apartheid. And now okay. apartheid, over the past three years, mm -hmm. have, you know, um, developed into a essentially fully fledged genocide. Uh, it, we call this the slow burning genocide okay. of the Rohingya for mm -hmm. 35 years. Mm -hmm. If you look at, say, I mean, this is not a, a hyperbole. Yes. Uh, this is not a push from activist perspective. Yes. If you look at the Rome statue mm -hmm. that came into effect in July 2002, Article 6 of the G Rome Statute is about genocide. Okay. And of the five genocidal acts, mm -hmm. Four are being committed by the Burmese state. And finally, this issue has been framed as mm -hmm. 
religious slash communal conflict okay. between the Rohingya Muslims and Rakhine okay. Buddhists. Mm -hmm. But they, this is, these are two groups that have lived together uh, in spite of some, you know, occasional flare up mm -hmm. um, uh, peacefully. Yeah. So, so I think to frame this as a Muslim Buddhist issue mm -hmm. is to really miss the point. The point is the Burmese state is anti-Islam mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of policy, as a matter of uh, its uh, thinking okay. and mindset. Mm -hmm. And the state is the main culprit. The Rakhine Buddhists mm -hmm. are local proxies. So okay. the, the issue is about the genocide of the Rohingya. Systematic but genocide by state. Systematic genocide, you know, the, the population, the, uh, the, the attempt to control and prevent the population okay. through restrictions on okay. marriage mm -hmm. and birth, mm -hmm. that is a genocidal act. Okay. And inflicting conditions of life mm -hmm. for the Rohingya that um, as such that Rohingyas would rather die fleeing the country at sea or They're over staying. land than okay. staying there. Doctor, so I'll come back to that. I'll, I'm just going to, before we go to the first break, giving a chance to Saiful. If it's that serious, why is the international community still are not very well aware of what's happening? And you put the word underreported mm -hmm. in your online articles. Uh, first of all, I think uh, Burma was a close country until very recently. And this is a community which has been persecuted since uh, 1977, mm -hmm. some would probably say 1948. So. From then on, they did not have education, they did not have access to uh, health and everything. So they failed to promote their own issues because there are people who are not educated enough. Mm -hmm. So after this opening up, uh, suddenly things like came to knowledge of the world because of the June violence, 2012. Okay. Okay. And from then on, people gets to know. Mm -hmm. And only then people started knowing that as he just mentioned, that it didn't happen yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, when you ask why it is so that we don't even know when UN even says that this is the most persecuted community in the world, mm -hmm. it is because of the fact the people who controls the power, even the people who are behind the mm -hmm. UN mm -hmm. and controlling the agenda, okay. don't want to present Burma as such, mm -hmm. the way that the state is doing such things to its own people. Okay. Saifal, I'm, I'm going to ask you um, after this first break to come back and maybe pick one photo that you remember very much to represent the suffering of the Rohingyas. And from then on, I would like to borrow your early experience, you know, being in the enclosure of the university, having a father. Activism is very much in line with your DNA. So we can't hope for the state alone to change by its own inertia. Of course. But this problem, the Rohingya has spread out across neighboring countries, for example. So maybe collectively, countries surrounding or near to Burma or Myanmar must do more to help. So we'll discuss that after this short break. Terima kasih kerana masih menonton Agenda Wani yang masih membicarakan tentang derita masyarakat Rohingya. Tragedi ini tidak boleh dibiarkan berterusan. Apa yang mampu kita lakukan, pertamanya ialah untuk betul-betul memahami isu ini. Saya ingin terus berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris dengan uh, kedua tamu saya. Uh, I would like to go straight to Saiful now. And if you can pick one, because I'm a journalist but I'm not a good photo journalist. But if I can imagine when you frame a shot, everything would be composed into it you know it will tell millions of stories just from one frame of photo so if you can pick one to share with us because i want to sh for you to share that deep intensity of this tragedy and crisis it's very difficult because you know for photographers their photographs are their children yeah and um, the reason I take pictures is not because I like the photograph mm -hmm. or the situation but uh, I just want to say a few things or as you said, millions of things. Mm -hmm. So it's a compo, I mean, the whole story tells one story. Okay. 
but still if you want to pick if you want me to pick mm -hmm. one photograph i would like to pick the photograph of that man standing alone in the um, in the na in the by the side of the river now okay his name is abul kalam he's a friend of mine he's a rohingya and he's a colleague we have been working together for five years since i started working on this issue so it was a it was a day that it was uh, it was a long day we photographed the whole day in the camp and i was personally very tired at one point he said let's have a walk by the by the river uh, it is very peaceful there we went down as you could see from the photograph and uh, and suddenly i was i was i was like 20 feet below him much closer to the river and suddenly he pointed towards the horizon actually he was standing on the river bank now and on the other side very near to where we are standing is barma mm -hmm. he pointed towards that and asked me can you see uh, what's on the other side i said yeah of course i can see it it's not that far and i then i said maybe it's just two kilometers mm -hmm. and then he said something that really framed it for me um, he said for you it's just two kilometers for me it's two million miles Mm -hmm. For you, you could cross and go there. For me, it is a place which I will never be able to visit. I can even see my home from there, where my my mother is there, my family is there. But this river is so big for me that I will never be able mm -hmm. to cross it. I think that moment I realized the feeling of this young man who mm -hmm. hasn't seen his family, parents, sisters, for ages. He came to Bangladesh when he was eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. uh, alone with uh, distant relatives. And uh, since then, he went back once, and just because he went to see his mother, Nasaka got to know, and his family was in deep trouble. His mother was almost beaten to death. His father was very badly beaten and tortured. So that moment, I mean, the whole, I can speak for hours about my photographs, mm -hmm. but that moment freezed everything, and I felt, you know, the whole idea of borders, the distance, it's so vague. Yeah. It is never about how many feet, how mm -hmm. many million miles. Mm -hmm. It's about the freedom that you have. Yes. So that's how, that's, that's the mm -hmm. photograph. Look, to everywhere around the world, if you look at Africa, the post-colonial period, you know, the nation state borders were just framed, notwithstanding the plight of the people, Absolutely. fragmentizing societies, whatever. Like it or not, we have inherited this problem. As a fellow Southeast Asian country, for example. So how do you think the countries closest to this issue can do more. It's not just applied from an NGO like thinking, asking for things to be done, but really concrete steps that civil society now, with the advent of internet, social media, and others, that we can really rally and governize to solve this issue once and for all. Well, f first of all, you know, the Rohingya issue is um, in part framed as the issue of stateless people. Okay. You know, in this day and age mm -hmm. of, say, you know, about 200 nation states um, strung together okay. around the United Nations, yes. you know, the, tra the greatest tragedy is that it is not enough to be human beings. You have to have a legal state, state. that recognizes you as a member mm -hmm. of that state. And uh, so because the Rohingyas who were born in the country, lived there for generations, some would even say centuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, It's not just simply an ethnic, uh, pure yes. ethnic group. Mm -hmm. it, it has uh, roots, you know, well, roots in there. Um, you know, it intermarried with mm -hmm. local Rakhines, mm -hmm. you know, converted to Buddhism. Mm -hmm. uh, some Rakhines converted to Islam. You know, like mm -hmm. the, 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 society, the problem yeah. of Rohingya is in part mm -hmm problem of the very nation state mm -hmm. that both the idea yes. and its operation mm -hmm. and so as such um, you know the Rohingya problem yes was created and is maintained by the Burmese state mm -hmm. but the neighboring states and ultimately the international system of nation states are you know culpable okay. in other words you know when you have uh, neighboring countries that go and do business and as or usual. business as usual mm -hmm. with the Burmese government that is the main perpetrator 
of Rohingya okay. suffering. All right. Then, okay. like you know, the the the, mm-hmm. the the they are actually, if we look at genocide as um, massive murder and destruction of a particular group, yes, uh, then you have accomplices in in all crimes, mm-hmm. even a car theft. Mm-hmm. In Kuala Lumpur, you cannot do this one alone. You have yeah. at least a few people. Yes. And mm-hmm. so we have to look at the guy who got in the car and turned the ignition and drive away to the guy who look okay. do the lookout. And okay. so we've got like Done. other nation states yes. that are culpable okay. in this situation. I have to go for the last break, but once we are back, the question is now, without changing the policies, the action of the government of Burma or Myanmar, Nothing will change. It will stay uh, as it is. No, you you will supply them, supply the Rohingyas with a few bags of rice, some you know uh, kilos of medicine, but and they'll get killed tomorrow. Yes, at any you know, time. Yes, in that scenario, mm-hmm. being pragmatic and not willing to confront the the Burmese the government issue. because you are doing m- okay. millions of dollars worth Fine. of business, Doctor, it will not I work. have to go for the break. But how do you confront a government in the twenty first century? That will be the discussion after this. Jadi apa? Apa yang akan terjadi kepada masyarakat Rohingya? Mereka tidak ditiraf oleh negara mereka sendiri jika kerajaan mereka sendiri tidak berubah. Orang luar susah untuk berubah kerana walaupun dikurung ke-21, jika anda bukan warga negara mana-mana negara bangsa, maka anda tidak ada hak. Itu persoalan pokoknya. Oleh itu, saya ingin meneruskan perbincangan dalam bahasa Inggeris. Um, I was just saying to the audience, if you're not a member of any nation state, then you pretty much doomed in the even in the 21st century so let's go back to the nation state go back to Burma Myanmar and if you cannot force them to change like I think we've passed that bridge with the economic ties now going stronger stronger with other countries around the world how do we use these economic ties as the single greatest motivator for the state now to change how they deal with the Rohingyas? Well, firstly, you know, we have this concept of the so-called international community. And the international community has to look at the facts on the ground and come to a consensus that this is crimes against humanity, this is ethnic cleansing, this is genocide. Mm -hmm. Look at all the international criminal laws, every single one, you know, including the most severe uh, the, um, the the uh, crimes, sorry, mm-hmm. genocidal mm-hmm. crimes, have been committed by the very member of ASEAN, mm-hmm. and who is actually this year the chair of the ASEAN. The chair of the ASEAN in 2014 is the main perpetrator of genocidal crime against 1.3 million Rohingya people out of whom only 40,000 have legal status. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, nine other members of the ASEAN, you know, to start with, have to put the facts on the ground, put the analysis that is backed by empirical data and and confront the regime. Look, this is not about defaming or slandering you as our Mm co-member, but this this is not just an internal affair. But this ASEAN, since the very beginning, has the ability and mechanism to deal with this kind of issue because even from the beginning, it's always been zone of peace, freedom, and neutrality, but I don't get to go into the other members' country and interfere. The word fear very, very much. Well, I I think like you you said um, earlier, we live in a highly integrated commercially, culturally, you know, uh, economically, uh, ideologically okay. uh, integrated 
uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. basically global society. Yes. Yeah. And we, I mean, the, look at. I mean, we are at Southeast Asia. Yes. This is not our national dress. That's yes. not your national dress. Mm -hmm. We were. No, we speak English mm -hmm. language. It's not possible to live in a cocoon of okay. like a national mm -hmm. isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in in even in. Uh, in our lives, you know, if your neighbor is an alcoholic, beating up the wife, attempting to rape his own daughter, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like, you know, like uh, throwing bottles mm -hmm. at uh, passers-by, mm -hmm. then what would you do? You would, you know, try to report that person okay. to the local authorities right. that failing there, mm -hmm. you will get a few neighbors mm -hmm. uh, together to overpower and stop that kind of destructive rapist, mm -hmm. uh, murderous, mm -hmm. or like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, violent behavior. That's what exactly ASEAN need to do. I think the ASEAN's, um, you know, um, the principle of non-interference is bogus, absolutely bogus. In this globalized mm -hmm. world, uh, when we see things, horrible things being done to communities and, you know, individuals and countries, and we content. have to stand up. That is okay. what we were taught all as right. children in, in okay. school and universities. And by all and the treaties that have been signed yeah? internationally, SIFO. We can talk about state, grouping of state until the cow come home, but um, I believe in the power of social media. You know, the Arab Spring has shown that, yes, it's messy, but it has its own ways of doing things. You've started, for example, the Kickstarter to generate fund for the Rohingya flight. So maybe it's innovative, creative, new ways like that. Not just waiting for bureaucrats representing countries to settle stuff, yeah. but using the power of the people. Yeah, sure. Mm, before going to that, I would like to add to Zani's point okay. that uh, I think it's no more an internal issue. Okay. It's a global problem. Mm -hmm. I think the basic problem with looking at the issue is people tend to think it's an uh, issue with Burma, but it's a problem for Bangladesh, the country I come from. It's an issue for Malaysia. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, you Thailand. know, we all know mm -hmm. how Australia has uh, formed this new yes. law. It's an issue for Thailand. It's an issue for all those countries in the Middle East. So it's not intervening into someone's personal uh, mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. state, right? So that's the first thing. And I think uh, since I started working, I can give you the, f give you that. Uh, with I can share one experience. Since I started showing my work in Bangladesh, this body of work has been shown around the world. But when I showed it to Bangladesh, I have seen so much empathy on people's, my, people's eyes because they come to me and say, is it true? Does it really happen to the Rohingyas? Oh, I'm really sorry. And you know, I f that moment I felt that they don't, they don't act because they don't know. Mm -hmm. So the first thing first is to let people know how they're suffering around the world. That, of course, includes my own country, Bangladesh, but mostly in Burma. Because the, you know, the global media doesn't want the world to know mm -hmm. that this is happening. Because they are also excited about the honeymoon they're ha going to have with Burma when mm -hmm. it comes to oil, minerals, and all mm -hmm. the all financial the resources, and yeah. corporate interests. So they want to hide it. But, co sorry to use the word, but thanks to the June violence, mm -hmm. they couldn't anymore hide it. Yep. Because the world knew, of course, the people people like us knew that something bad is happening, and we got to know. So I think it's all about finding ways to make the general people involved and make people concerned about the situation. And the more people know, the more people raise their voice. I think there is a chance that this corresponding state should act. And you're seeing that online, that the awareness, the empathy is growing. Yes, I have seen, uh, first of all, it's an issue. It's not a, it's, I'm not talking about Iraq war. I'm not yes. talking about the refugees from mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the drone attacks in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about an issue which people didn't even know that there is some, uh, there is a group called Rohingyas. Mm -hmm. And there is this country and where people are going through this for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So I've seen this growing, and wherever I go, people just not thank me because of the work that we are doing, mm -hmm. but thank me because of the fact that they finally know, okay, something so bad has happened. And it's growing, of course, and mm -hmm. uh, thanks to all the partners I've been working with, they have shown this work. Okay, thank you so much to Dr. Mongzarni and Saifu for making the point. I wish we could have more points to be discussed, but I'm sure we can somehow, across the internet or otherwise, keep in touch and keep propagating the real facts and truth about what's happening.
in Burma or Myanmar as we see it now. Thanks to you for watching. Hantarkan pandangan anda sendiri kepada Astro Awani dengan pelbagai platform yang ada. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter pun terus semua turun aplikasi mudah alih. Uh, Astro Awani di iOS dan juga Android. Dan insyaAllah kita jumpa lagi dalam episod Agenda Awani yang lain pula. Selamat malam dan terima kasih. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.